Hey folks, welcome back. In this video we're going to go over risks of space exploration, so let's get started. It says here that exploring space can pose many risks for humans, so we're going to look at a few examples. The first one is re-entry of a space shuttle, and it says when a spacecraft re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, it is travelling very fast and will experience very high frictional forces due to the particles in the atmosphere. This generates lots of heat. Temperatures can reach as high as 1650 degrees Celsius upon re-entry. To protect astronauts from these extremely high temperatures, the spacecraft has heat-proof tiles on its underside. These tiles require a lot of heat energy before they change state. That is, they must have a high specific heat capacity. So that's us linking back to the properties of matter topic. And the higher the specific heat capacity of the heat-proof tiles, the lower its change in temperature will be. It then says if a spacecraft is not properly protected from the heat when passing through the Earth's atmosphere, it can suffer a catastrophic failure or burn up. Note, problems relating to heat shielding may involve specific heat capacity and specific latent heat from the properties of matter topic. You should already be familiar with how to use these equations. So remember, for specific heat capacity we have EH equals CM delta T, which relates heat energy, specific heat capacity, mass and change in temperature. And for specific latent heat we have EH equals ML, where again EH is heat energy, M is the mass and L is specific latent heat of vaporization or fusion. And if you look at the spacecraft here, it's undergoing re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere and the heat proof tiles or heat shielding material on the underside of the spacecraft is glowing red hot. And we can also think about how the shape of the spacecraft will affect how much it's going to burn up and re-entry. So if we look at this simulation here, we can use it to investigate which of a number of spacecraft shapes is best to protect against the heat of re-entry. So if we start off with this needle shaped one here, you can see that it's going to burn up and re-entry quite a bit, it's going to glow red hot. If we then go to this rounded shape here, you can see that it will also burn up very red hot there. And lastly we have this kind of rounded cone shaped one here. And you'll see it doesn't actually burn up as much as the other two on re-entry. And the reason for that is it says here you may be surprised to find that it is the blunt shape that protects against heat best. This is because the blunt shape traps a layer of air that can't get out of the way. This trapped layer deflects the heated shock wave away from the surface of the spacecraft. So we're saying the best shape here was the blunt one on the left, the sort of rounded cone shape, and that's why this shape has been able to make it back to the Earth. Moving on, another risk of space exploration would be the landing of a space shuttle. So it says spacecraft designed to land in an atmosphere can use parachutes to slow to a safe speed. No fuel is required. And there's an example of the parachute attached to a space shuttle to slow it down. It then says landing on a body without an atmosphere means that the spacecraft does not need any heat shielding. However, nor can the spacecraft use parachutes to slow down. This means that the spacecraft must use fuel to slow down as it approaches the surface. Another risk of space exploration would be temperature, and it says it can vary from being extremely cold, and shadow temperatures can be as low as minus 150 degrees Celsius, to very hot. In line of sight of the sun, temperatures can be as high as 120 degrees Celsius. So because of these extreme temperatures, it says the suits and craft are required to keep the environment at the temperature that we can live in, about 20 degrees Celsius, or room temperature. And that's especially important if astronauts are going to leave the space station and do spacewalks. Another risk would be the vacuum of space. So it says space is a vacuum, which means that there are no particles and therefore no atmosphere. Humans require food, water and oxygen to survive. They also produce waste. Special spacesuits are designed to allow astronauts to breathe during spacewalks and withstand extreme temperatures and pressures. So all of these things that we take for granted on Earth, such as breathing, eating, sleeping and so on, are going to be much harder in space. Moving on, another risk would be solar flares and radiation. And it says humans are vulnerable to exposure to ionising radiations such as those emitted with solar flares. And remember ionising radiations are things like alpha particles, beta particles and gamma rays that you learned about in the radiation topic. And you can see the picture here shows you solar flares. It then says this is why most space exploration is done by robots. Another risk would be space debris and micrometeorites. There is a danger of impact damage to spacecraft and astronauts during spacewalks from space debris and micrometeorites. And there's a good scene in the film Gravity which shows you the dangers of this space debris. And the picture here shows you an example of space debris and it could just be bits of satellites that have broken or bits of other spacecraft that have burned up on re-entry and so on. And our last challenge here is electricity. So it says all spacecraft require electricity to power the onboard devices and machines which astronauts depend on to survive. This can be done using solar panels, however missions that are planned for the outer solar system or beyond need power that does not depend on the sun. So if the spacecraft is in line of sight of the sun, then you can use solar panels in your spacecraft to generate electricity. However, if you're far away from the sun, then you need other means of producing electricity. And this would be done by things called fuel cells, which work through chemical reactions to produce electricity. 
That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.